The Daily Bread Bible Study is back for day 188. This is Monday, July 6th, 2020, focusing on Proverbs chapters 24 through 26. So, moving into chapter 24, I've selected verses 5 and 6 for us to start with. Wise warriors are mightier than strong ones, and those who have knowledge than those who have strength. For by wise guidance you can wage your war. In abundance of counselors there is victory. I'm not as keen on the military you know, um, a reference, but you know, I think the thought is uh, applicable to any sort of group endeavor that communal wisdom is to be sought after, and counsel helps us you know, be able to discern and overcome challenges together than we can do alone. So may you remember that wisdom is very important and to be discerning that together we can come up with a plan where I think we all um, have victory. In Proverbs 24, 7 through 19, it says, Do not rejoice when your enemies fall. And do not let your heart be glad when they stumble, or else the Lord will see it and be displeased. I think this calls us to be mature, you know, when we either fight battles or try and, you know, seek counsel and wisdom in order to get victory. This is about being mature and requires you to celebrate when conflict is resolved, when conflict is over. Instead of obsessing on the feeling of being right or victorious, uh, it's more helpful when you are wrong um, and become corrected you know, to have that humility when you do have victory. People will notice that it will lead well in life and um, conflict management. This is also very similar to Jesus' words in Matthew 5, 43 through 44. You've heard it said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy, but I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. So the sentiment of being mature and also wanting an end to conflict and an end to eneminess and having enemies is a very important and valuable life skill. In Proverbs chapter 25, I selected verse 1, which says, these are other proverbs of Solomon that the officials of King Hezekiah of Judah copied. So Hezekiah came after King Solomon, and so it's these uh, you know these pieces of wisdom that King Solomon had were not put together in any sort of you know uh, compiled book. But now through the work of other individuals, including King Hezekiah of Judah, we have the you know this information kept down. King Hezekiah was a good king, and it shows that by valuing bringing this book together, it was a very wise move on his part as well, too. Uh, in Proverbs 25, verse 20, I selected, Like vinegar on a wound is one who sings songs to a heavy heart. So the idea is that when you sing songs to have a heavy heart, uh, it'll sting, it'll hurt, it will not... Um, you know, as much provide the healing that we hope for, uh, like vinegar on an opened wound. And this, I think, applies to what humans try and do. We have empathy for others, but we also are kind of selfish as well, too, right? And what do I say by, you know, how can we have empathy and be selfish for others? Well, I think the challenge is that you know, we might have our own insecurities and our own uncomfortability with other people suffering. It's uncomfortable uncomfortable to be about somebody who's hurting. You want to fix it. And me as a middle child especially, I definitely want to fix it. I want it to be resolved. I want you know, conflict to go away. And so we can often try and cheer people up, especially when they're feeling sad. But upon reflection, I know that that's kind of unhelpful. Right? In my times of suffering, I found that you know, presence, understanding, compassion, these are the things that provide true healing for me instead of somebody being uncomfortable and saying, hey, just get over it, or you know, here's how to fix it. 
In Proverbs chapter 26, I selected verse 4 to start with. It says, Do not answer fools according to their folly, or you will be a fool yourself. You know, I think the wisdom that I gleaned from this phrase is, you know, when you change your behavior in order to become, you know, to try and beat a fool at, you know, his own game or her own game, you make yourself foolish. And really just, I think the wisdom is to use less of your energy trying to um, you know, focus on those who will not benefit from your knowledge. It's, um, you know, can we all want to try and help other individuals learn and grow. Ultimately, each individual is responsible for their own learning and growth. Um, but there are some individuals who just aren't ready to receive you know, correction or wisdom or knowledge or insight. And so really, it's a waste of their time and a waste of your energy and time as well, too. So it's important you know, to, to remember that we're trying to help people, but not everybody, you know, especially when they're acting foolish, can receive that correction. In Proverbs 26, 17, the last thought I have for today is like somebody who takes a passing dog by the ears of one who meddles in the quarrel of another. When we interject ourselves into the conflict of others, you are likely to get hurt. Um, you can encourage others to seek reconciliation and um, you know, healthy interactions. And sometimes you know, it's important to jump in and try and help out. Um, sometimes it's worth the risk of getting hurt if it's you know, people that you care about and something that you think you can help manage. But in general, especially with other people, it's best when parties just work out their conflicts themselves and you know that you don't have to get involved in the middle of it. I think the danger and the downside is that people either depending upon you or associating you with the conflict and think that you become a problem in the conflict instead of people really being mature and taking ownership of you know their challenges, their anxieties, their conflict within themselves and how the other person you know escalates that. So May you have peace within your relationships. May you um, not be harmed, but have fullness of life and wholeness. And thanks for joining me for this Daily Bread Bible Study journey.